Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop, Safe and Sound. I have not left my home all day, and I don't plan on it. We're in for another 24 hours. We've already had uh, about 12 hours of this heavy rain. It's let up just a little bit right now. The fog is heavy. You can't even see the top of the skyscrapers. Um, and this is what's left over from the tropical storm. But I'm not turning on that heater. No, I play this game every year. Let's see how far we can get before we turn on the heater. Although I may have to light my first fire of the season, but I thought I'd let you see uh, the gray city of Philadelphia. Okay, enough of that. Let's go out to the kitchen counter. I've got some stuff to show you. kitchen and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now there isn't any surprise <laughs> yesterday I told you make sure you tune in tomorrow I've got a surprise for you well the surprise is I have no surprise actually I just didn't get around to the surprise I don't know it's just been one of those days I'm in and out but I do have some glass to show you now I'm not gonna rattle on and on and on about the stuff I showed you yesterday but everything that you see here on the kitchen counter is currently listed in the old curiosity shop and it's up for sale right now let's click quickly review the glass that I already talked about and that you've already seen uh, if you watched yesterday's video here's Indiana's modern classic from the late 20s into the early 30s. Came in many different colors. This is the console bowl. And that's a fired on paint with platinum uh, decoration on the points. This piece over here is in a decagon shape. I think it might also be Indiana, um, although I'm not really certain about that. Uh, was it Cambridge? Cambridge also had a pattern called decagon. There's no Cambridge mark on this, and it's painted the same way the modern classic is, with this thick, heavy, almost waxy paint. And you can see on the back, it just looks horrible, like it's been through a dishwasher. But that's the way this, the paint looks on the back. Um, it holds up pretty well. Um, it doesn't flake off or scratch off. It just looks horrible from the underside, but from the top, as you can see, it really looks nice. Now, I don't know if I, did I show you this yesterday or not? I don't, I don't think I did. Let's get it back up there where you can see it. So you could call it a chop plate or a cake plate or a serving plate, whatever you want to call it. Just don't call it late for dinner if it's got the main course on it. So again, Art Deco 1930s, really nice Art Deco here. And this is European Austrian, I believe. Uh, well, I don't have to, let's turn it over. Uh, it is made in Austria, Austria. And this is going to date, oh, 1925 to 1935. Wonderful geometric design. Now this is real geometric Art Deco, early Art Deco. Bold colors with gilding. 
It's a dinner plate, just one. Uh, this should sell. They do sell for about $20 per plate, and this was, I think, $1.99 at one of my Goodwill stores. I picked it up as soon as I saw that Art Deco pattern. Really is pretty. Don't you think? The four matching salt and pepper shakers there. Beautifully encrusted with gold. And so uh, all four are to get, I'm selling all four together. There's the Cambridge bowl back there with the fired on blue paint and the black decoration. Small bowl. And uh, that one, it does have the Cambridge mark on the inside. Talked about that yesterday as well as the satin glass vase here, which uh, is, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And I think it's Tiffin. Now I know these are Tiffin back here, and I th um, this pattern I think was introduced in the mid-twenties and produced until the early 1930s, and it's a thistle pattern. And it is made by the Tiffin Glass Company, and you could call these tall sherbets if you like, or champagnes, use them for your frosted mini wheats. Look at how elegant they are. That's a paneled optic pattern there in the bowl of the glass and then all, <clears throat> excuse me, all these beautifully etched uh, pattern, uh, thistles all around here. Now thistles are no joke. I used to play in somebody's backyard as a kid uh, and there's nothing like running around with no shoes on and stepping on thistles. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Mm-hmm. But they're beautifully done, paper thin, and amazing that none of these, stop spinning it, none of these are damaged uh, until I damaged one. All six of these crystal clear, no chips or no cracks, beautiful thistles on them. They're going to be double boxed in a big box so that they get shipped safely. Now the other elegant depression glass in the back, I know this glass by heart because ever since I was a little boy banished to the children's table, I couldn't wait to sit with the adults and drink out of the Faustoria chintz and that's what this is. Don't worry, I'm not selling any family pieces. That's all still in my mother's china closet. But the reason I know this pattern very popular pattern made by the Faustoria Glass Company, introduced in 1940, and I think they made it for, oh, 20, 25, maybe even 30 years, but introduced in 1940, and my grandfather, I'm not going to tell you the whole story now, actually, you know what I should do? I should interview my mother while she's sitting in front of the china closet with all this stuff behind her and have her tell you the story, but my grandfather purchased this pattern for my grandmother and um, it's been the family crystal ever since so lots of memories drinking out of this the whole family it's been in the family since it was bought in the 1940s again not these my mother has plenty of it she doesn't need any more we have replaced a few pieces over the years because they're also they're paper thin this is the tall water water goblet Try to get it where you can actually see the chintz pattern. Okay. And then there are four small, oh, what do you call it? Tomato cactus, cactus. <laughs> I told you it's, I'm in and out today. Tomato cocktail glasses or little juice glasses for the breakfast table or, uh, however you'd like, whatever you'd like to drink out of that. We don't really fuss at our house. We're teetotalers anyway, uh, and so we, we only drink ice, ice water or iced tea out of these, and sometimes a little eggnog out of these at Christmas. So uh, four of the tall and four of the small, I'm selling them in uh, two separate auctions. Doesn't quite have the value that it once did, again, not a whole lot of people are still filling china closets with etched 
crystal uh, elegant depression glass, but some folks are. It is beautiful. It is very well made. And I still love it and appreciate it. Now, this was a surprise, and boy, was it a thrill. I went into the Goodwill last week, and they had just wheeled out the fresh cart from the back, and my nemesis wasn't there, and I saw this, and I was all over it. So I grabbed, grabbed it there. I said grab. And you know what? I have to admit, I grabbed it <laughs> right like that. What is it? Well, it's made by Campbell Jones Glass Company. I think they were swallowed up by the U.S. Glass Company in the late 1890s. You know, the U.S. Glass Company acquired a whole bunch of little glass factories and if my memory serves, I think Campbell Jones was one of them. But before they became a part of that big conglomerate called U.S. Glass, Campbell Jones made uh, pressed glass, early American pressed glass. And uh, from what I can tell, this was introduced in 1883. And it had lots of different names. Um, Several other glass companies copied it, and it was still in the glass catalogs even into the early 20s. But this is going to be the, the earlier Campbell and Jones 1880s uh, cake pedestal. And it's 11 inches across the top, and it stands about 7.5 inches tall. A beautiful amber honey color, and if I wish you could run your hands along the bottom of this. It is so sharp. You, I'll tell you, if I grabbed it this way and lifted this cake plate up like that, I would cut myself. The points are so sharp and beautifully done. So I'm going to grab it by its stem and put fingerprints all over it. Just look at how beautiful that is. And there are no cuts on the top from knives being scraped across it. It's wonderful to have that little icing lip there. The base is just beautiful. The pedestal and the base are joined there. I believe that's called a biscuit. That's a, a, a piece of glass that joins the top to the, the, the actual cake stand, cake plate to the, to the base. But there's not a chip or a crack or any roughness around the bottom or around any of the edges. I think that whoever owned this was storing it this way and one or two of these little points underneath have a tiny bit, a little bit of roughness or a chip. I'm going to try to find one, uh, but it's going to be difficult. It's almost impossible to see. You really have to feel it. There's one right there. Uh, can you spot it? Right there, right there. There's a little chip on one of the points, but you... Now, can you see it now? Of course not, and you can't see it there either. You really only feel it. It's heavy. Wouldn't your pumpkin pie be what fantastic on that? You see these in crystal. Almost all of them are in crystal. There's not a single one in amber for sale right now on eBay. At least I couldn't find any, and I didn't see any that had sold in the last three months. It's in really good condition, super clean, you can't go wrong, and it really is stunning. Beautiful piece right there, that cake stand, 1880s. I'm getting an imperial glass feel on this, but it's unmarked, so I'm not certain. It's a piece of iridescent glass. It's a paneled bowl. Did I say imperial? I think that's what I meant to say really pretty iridescence. The base color of the glass is sort of a, uh, what would you call it? <laughs> I'm gonna let you, it's a pearlescent, I don't know, I don't know what color you got. It's clear glass, but there is a little bit of a tint to it. Um, there's some fuzz on it or something. I don't know where that came from. We'll blame the cat. And it's just a really pretty... Now, you would not call this carnival glass, even though it is iridescent. 
That's carnival glass. That's not. How come? Well, they're both iridescent. Yes. But the carnival glass always, almost always, is heavily decorated. It's got patterns on it. And here we see hearts and vines, but you know with carnival glass you're usually going to find grapes and cables and horseshoes and peacocks and cherries and all kinds of decorations. So this is what carnival glass collectors refer to as carnival glass, where that would just simply be an iridescent bowl and not really be called carnival glass by carnival glass collect. It helps if you're listing glass you know, buying it and selling it, so I would not list this as Carnival. And this piece right here is made by Fenton, and it is the heart and vine pattern. I think I showed this to you a while back. And that's not a crack in the middle, it's an inclusion. You see those a lot on Carnival glass, on any glass, but I see it usually on Fenton as well. And I don't like that it's there, but it's not considered damage. It's Part of the production. Now this is a plate and plates are a lot harder to find in carnival. It's, they're usually bowls and other types of serving dishes, candy dishes, bonbons and whatnot. Uh, but this is unusual and of course I think everybody knows we, we're, we look at the base color of the glass which is blue. So, we're, so you would actually refer to this as the color being blue because that's the color that we see on the part of the glass that hasn't been uh, that that did not receive the spray the mineral salts to iridize it so this is iridescent and it's funny because there's one listed on eBay right now and it's been there for a while and the person is asking six hundred and ninety five dollars for it uh, okay and so actually mine I think I'm only asking I don't, I forget what my starting bid is, maybe 25, maybe 30 bucks. Um, I like to just, you know, I, I paid two or three dollars for it and we'll just see where the market takes it. It is an auction and I think the auction lasts uh, about seven days. So maybe it'll sell for about a hundred dollars. I'm not really sure what it'll do, but the iridescence on it is really beautiful. And you never really know exactly what it's going to look like until it's been fired. That's just beautiful. Okay, did I, did I, I think I covered everything. That's everything right there. Uh, so once again, it's all listed in the old curiosity shop. And I want to thank you for watching. I hope everybody's doing well across this country and across the globe. I always forget to include my international viewers and you guys are just as much a part of this as anybody else. And I appreciate you watching and commenting. I hope everyone is doing well. It's Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday. It's probably still going to be raining here, so I just don't know. Maybe I'll get to do some shopping and I'll come back tomorrow night with a thrift haul. Who knows? But I do have a couple little special Halloween things that are going to pop on either Friday or Saturday. So I hope you'll stay tuned to the channel for that. In the meantime, I'm Scott wishing you well, saying thanks for watching. And so long for now.